Hello, everyone. Welcome today on this beautiful Monday morning. Uh, what is it, December 18th here? Gosh, we're close to Christmas, guys. Christmas is less than a week away. Can you believe it? I cannot believe we're like almost here a week away. It's crazy. I love Christmas with a passion. And I want, you know, I tell you, today is just phenomenal. It really is. You know, the weather's been sort of cool. It's been a little bit of, you know, cold and hot mixed in here in Alabama. But I wanted to talk today about a little bit about my, my book for the month, which is Receiving the Gift of the Spirit. You know, a lot of times people ask me, you know, what are the gifts of the Spirit? You know, how do we, uh, you know, um, how do we open up those gifts of Spirit inside of us? And one of the key things we have to look at is the word awareness, you know, being alert and aware. And the Bible makes it plain to, you know, be alert, be receptive, uh, you know, awakest thou who sleeps and slumbers. We talked about that last week, which is, you know, staying awake to the things of the Spirit. Um, so I thought about today doing something very interesting as opposed to talking about the actual spiritual gifts themselves. Um, I want to actually dive into maybe some questions you guys would have today. So once again, we're on Facebook, on Instagram. So, uh, you guys be thinking about some questions we can move into and present your questions in the uh, comment section below on Instagram or Facebook. I would love to be able to answer them for you guys today, but I would highly encourage you guys to get this book. We have ran out three times. We have a little bit more uh, uh, books right now in stock. If you guys want to order one or download the ebook on receiving the gift of the Spirit before we move into the next book on January. So, but while you guys are thinking about some questions, let me say this as well. We uh, we're going to have our prophetic live night this coming Wednesday night, but we decided to put it off um, instead of the twentieth. We're going to do the twenty seventh. That way, we're just a few days away from. Um, the new year of 2024. And I want to be able to open up that sort of year as close as we can uh, with a bang, but also sort of prophetically uh, reading you guys and doing prophetic words and maybe just ushering in the new new um, new year as well. So um, I want to be able to do that on the 27th, which is uh, next Wednesday night. All right. So you guys definitely be prepared. Be prayed up, you know, get your friends, family members, whatever, to join on board with us because I know it's going to be a great, great Wednesday night. It's usually Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Central Time. We usually do it the third week uh, as far as Wednesdays of every month, but I wanted to do it the fourth week since we're going into a new year this this um next week so i'm excited about that so tell all your friends about it also do not forget um do not forget as we go into 2024 i really want you guys to sign up sign up to receive a monthly prophetic word it's very important because once again we have so many people that i prophesy to on a day-to-day -day basis for the month for every, every month and so many people we, we're getting stories and testimonies of people all the time like crazy testimonies um of just things one lady told me she said you know jeremy you called out a deficiency i had uh you know last month she said i just didn't even i wasn't even aware of it went to the doctor it literally saved my life literally saved my life uh, one one gentleman told me, he said, you know, I've, I've, I was getting depressed. I haven't had a job in months, getting a little depressed. And all of a sudden, you just, uh, on my, I think it was like the December uh, prophetic word, he said, you just prophesied and you said, you know, hey, I see you working with numbers. I see you doing this and this and this. He said, and you kept on saying, you know, now's the time, now's the time. He said, I got a job within two days after that, after being, you know, laid off for like five months. You know, um, and it pulled him out of depression. So, you know, you never know, guys. You never know exactly what a what a prophetic word will do for you. Now, many of you might be saying to yourself, you know, hey, you know, I don't, do I really need to hear from God every month? Sure you do. We need to hear from God every single day of our lives, you know, internally and externally, simply because of the fact that, you know, when we hear God internally, we want to be able to get that confirmation externally. It's very important that we understand the awareness of, of getting confirmation externally for those things that are internalized within inside of us that we hear, you know, the voice of the Good Shepherd inside of us. Also remember this, one of the things I've realized is this, everything in the kingdom is within inside of you, but does it mean that you know all, everything of the kingdom? No. Does it mean you know everything about your life? No. We see in part and we prophesy in part, which also means we hear in part. And all that means is this, you will hear what you are going to hear for that day, 
And when you begin to dive into the place of being outside of you, hello, uh, which we're not because we're always inside of ourselves, you know, it's good to be able to know that God will speak to us through someone else on the ex external part of us that maybe we're not even aware of. You know, a lot of times if we go through the daily, day to day, the daily grind, as I call it, let's say focus on work, focus on family. And if you're like me, you know, you focus on, you know, your kids, you know, your, your spouse, you know, you want to be able to make sure you get the right Christmas present. And sometimes we tend to um, sort of consider that voice of God sort of null and void, not that we mean to, but we consciously are not aware of the fact that we are so in tune with what's going on in that moment, in that day, in the hour, that sometimes God wants to speak to us on things that we're not even aware of. he wants to speak to us on. And so it's very important that we begin to stay tuned to what is in us and also what is on the outside of us to actually keep us sharpened. Because a lot of times we forget, uh, you know, to hear from God, or maybe we're not aware that God wants to speak to us on something way over here in left field when we're over here in right field focusing on, you know, a situation, maybe like health or, or a job or kids or Christmas or, you know, uh, you know, you stump your toe, you know, you're focusing on that. You need to go to the doctor or whatever. And God could be saying, hey, you need to know about this. So it's vitally important. You hear from God on a day-to-day -day basis, much less on a month-to-month -month basis from somebody on, on the outside of you. It has saved people's lives. It's healed people. It's causing people to, to walk in more place of awareness. So sign up today. Sign up right now for the daily, I mean, excuse me, for the monthly prophetic word because you desperately need to be able to get that confirmation from God month to month to say, man, thank you, God. I completely forgot about that. And that's the number one thing I hear all the time is people saying, you know, man, I forgot about that, God, and you reminded me, right? God's reminders can be lifesavers for us. So you need to keep that, you know, uh, um, keep that in your, in, your, in your mind, in your spirit. So let's get into some questions today. I'm not going to keep you guys real long, but I want to answer some questions. I just felt like, I feel like God wanted me to do some questions and answers today. So let's go ahead and get into that today. So um, we have, first of all, from Rebecca, one of my dear friends, Rebecca, who I love dearly. She says, the prophetic word has helped me address medical issues that I didn't even know about. Thank you, Rebecca. That's a statement, not a question, but I'm so, I love that. Do you notice what she just said? She she said the prophetic word has helped her address medical issues she didn't even realize she had. I mean, when I say the, God's prophetic word is lifesavers, folks, I'm serious. They are lifesavers. They can get you jobs. They can save you from, I mean, one gentleman told me, he said, Jeremy, he said, you know, this was a couple years ago. He said, he said, you literally saved me from having a heart attack. And I'm like, you're kidding me. He said, he said, in one of your prophetic words, he said, you saw a vision and you said, I just see the doctor. It doesn't mean, you know, anything negative. It doesn't mean God's trying to scare you. I just see you. God says you need to go to the doctor. He said, I went to the doctor the next day, which usually takes weeks to get in. He said, and it saved my life. He said, because I, he said, the doctor said, man, we need to do this right now. We need to, you know, do this and, and, and gave him this sort of new regimen to do. And it literally saved him from having a heart attack. I mean, guys, you just don't know what God's prophetic word will do to you and for you and through you. God's prophetic word also is healing anointment and oil that actually can, can help eradicate things that you're not even aware of that's going on in your body. So God's prophetic word comes to you uh, like a two-edged sword, sword and, it, and it can cut asunder between soul and spirit, which means it can cut asunder, break asunder, eradicate those emotions you've been dealing with maybe from an argument or, 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 or what somebody said to you, or maybe depression. So you never know what God's prophetic word can do to you when it cuts asunder and separates your emotional state of, con of consciousness at the moment versus the reality God is saying, hey, wake up, focus on this. Hey, wake up, focus on this. So you never know. Plus, it's also healing oil to your body. So God's prophetic word that is eternal, vibrational, can actually realign your body and you're not even aware of what it's doing to you. I hear that a whole lot in my, you know, for, from people as well. So um, thank you, <laughs> Pamela. I appreciate that. One question we have today is how do we hear the Holy Spirit more? Great question. So a lot of times we have to begin to say, number one, we can say, you know, yeah, read your Bible. Yeah, pray. And those are all true. But once again, I'm going to go back to my my famous word that I use all the time, and that is being consciously aware of who you are, 
being consciously aware of where you are. You know, when you hear words like consciousness, you know, a lot of times people say things such as, you know, well, that sounds a little new age. Hey, you know what? You have a subconscious and a conscious, you know, so which means if, you know, consciously aware is meaning that you are you are in that state of awareness of what is your what is surrounding you why because like she asked you know she said how do we stay more in tune with hearing the voice of god when you are more consciously aware of your of people places and things around you the holy spirit can quicken you more to say hey you recognize this lady normally you wouldn't recognize her because you're you know you know a state you know you are you know, um, more aware of this over here, or you're, or you're sort of, you know, honing in on where you need to be, but I want you to be consciously aware of this lady beside you, or maybe the woman in front of you at the grocery store. Why? That triggers, now hear me closely, that will trigger you to hear the Holy Spirit more. Because when we're, when I'm consciously aware, like when I'm at, when I, let's say if I'm at the grocery store or Target or somewhere and, uh, cause I love getting, giving away money. I'm not gonna lie about it. I'm not bragging. I just love to do it. It's my gifting. I love giving away money to people. I love buying things for people. I literally take out money in my bank account every two weeks just to hand out because I love blessing people. I just love that with a passion. I'm like a kid at a candy store with that. And so when I'm consciously aware of those around me, let's say with a woman in front of me with two children. Now, those who know me know I'm, my heart is always towards Hispanic people. I just, it, just, it just is. Um, uh, because of their, you know, their fight, their struggle to get to the country, to find a better life for themselves, you know, um, then I, I'm always aware of that. And that's sort of my anointing and my blessing is having a desire and, and love for, you know, for immigrants here. So, uh, if I'm constantly aware of those around me, the Holy Spirit can trigger me to say, Hey, Jeremy, I need you to buy these people some clothes. Hey, I need you to tell them you love them. Hey, I need you to buy their groceries today. And when, when you're constantly aware, let's say, of somebody struggling, getting their credit card out, or struggling trying to find their checkbook, instantly God can trigger you, the Holy Spirit can trigger you to say, hey, you know what, I'm causing them to sort of have uh, delays trying to get to their pocketbook because I'm trying to get your attention to buy their stuff. And so the, so the Holy Spirit will, you know, you will hear the quickening of the Holy Spirit, when you are more walking in a state of awareness, when you're consciously awake, awakened to your environment. That's why a noun, people, places, or things are vitally important. Because when, you, when, when people say, well, I want to hear the Holy Spirit more, check this out. The Holy Spirit is a giving spirit. The Holy Spirit is a nurturing spirit. The Holy Spirit is a loving spirit. What does that mean? It means when you begin to be in your now reality, you will hear God more because God was the Holy Spirit will quicken you to say, hey, buy this for so-and-so. Hey, notice this over here. Hey, be aware you, you need gas in your car. You know, hey, be aware that there's a bump in the road you know, ahead. And you need to dodge the bullet, you know, so to say. You know, when you are aware of what is around you, the Holy Spirit, you literally open up the door for the Holy Spirit to speak to you more because the Holy Spirit is a giving spirit. The you know, Holy Spirit will, will, will quicken you to say, pay attention to this woman. Pay attention to your car. Hey, look at this job over here. Hey, look at that billboard. That's your new job. I need you to put a resume in. Are you with me? Let me say this to you guys, and most people don't, don't think about this. When you are not consciously aware, now being very, I'm going to be brutally honest for a moment. When you're not consciously aware of what is around here, you're being selfish. Oh, wow. Can you hear that? How many just heard that? When you when you are more honing in on, got to get to work, got to get to work, you're being selfish. You might, well, is that selfishness? It is because you're not awakened to your environment and your environment is where the Holy Spirit loves to speak to you on because it blesses people, encourages people, it motivates people, exhorts people. Are you with me? The Holy Spirit is, is about people. That's why in the book of Acts, when the people were all in one accord, it triggered the Holy Spirit. I like to use that word triggered. It triggered the Holy Spirit to move in the atmosphere. So if you want to hear God more, be aware of your environment more. 
Be aware of your of the place in which you are. Be aware of who is around you. Be aware. Be you know. Most people are like, I got to be cautious. No, that's that's good, but sometimes that can be more of a negative connotation than anything. I got to be more warning, caution. What you're gonna do is you're gonna invite danger into your life. You know. Oh my gosh, I got to watch out. Got to watch out. That's you're inviting more negative danger in your life when you do that. I'm not cautiously aware. I'm aware in the presence to give. I'm aware in the presence to motivate. I'm in the, I'm aware in the presence of what's around me to be able to, you know, to bless, to give, to encourage, you know, those, those are things you want to focus on. I don't focus on the negative. Oh, got to be aware. You know, I had one person tell me one time, you know, I'll, I always go in places to, to uh, know where the nearest exit is. And I'm like, that's a sad existence. Because when you're living in the in an atmosphere of always needing to know where the exit is in case something happens, you're inviting, you're setting up law of attraction, you're setting up your environment to be dangerous and be cautious. There's nothing wrong with being alert. Alert is not being negative, but being cautiously aware. Where's the, where's the exit door? What is that guy doing? What is she doing? You're inviting danger upon yourself. Uh uh, not for me. Not for me. I'm. I'd rather move in in a place of expectation, whether I'm expecting something or I'm expecting to bless somebody. That's the God I serve. So those are things that that is going to help you to hear the voice of God more. Always remember this: for God to love the world that He gave. If you want to hear the voice of God more, give. I mean, give um, more of your thoughts. Let your mind be more in a giving mode of being constantly aware of your environment. And you will hear the Holy Spirit more because the Holy Spirit is moved upon. I'm going to say it again. The Holy Spirit's triggered by your love. It's triggered by you being aware of your environment because you're caring. You're wanting to bless. You're wanting to encourage. So if you want to move, if you want to be moved on by the Holy Spirit to hear more, you be, you be a blessing more. Right, and you'll be able to hear the voice of God even more. And God will quicken your mortal body more in that, in that place of, of hearing him even at a deeper realm. All right. Another question from Pamela. How do we activate? I just don't know how to do that to Pamela. How do we activate more of the Holy Spirit in us? I love that. I think what I just said sort of helps helps awaken that. But to activate more is once again being more cautiously, cautiously uh, excuse me, uh, more consciously aware. Another way to activate the Holy Spirit as well is also when, when we begin to set ourselves up to be a blessing and we and we and we set ourselves up to know you know like god what is your kingdom all about the kingdom of god is righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost so what do i want to do to activate the kingdom of god more what i want to do to activate the holy spirit more what I, what do i want to do to activate heaven more to bring heaven down is knowing the definition of the kingdom and operating in that the more here here's a here's a key thing i would i would say to you pamela the more we activate the kingdom the more we activate the spirit of god the more we activate our love the more we activate our awareness the more we activate our awareness the more we activate the voice of god the more we activate the voice of god the more the more activate the power of servanthood the more activate the power of leadership all the you know the when the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god is righteousness and all these other things shall be added when i activate the kingdom i'm activating and operating in the fullness of the i am i'm operating and and i'm awakening the fullness of the universe in me because everything around me flows and works together remember all things work together for the good so when i activate the kingdom which is what righteousness which which doesn't mean i don't drink i don't smoke i don't watch movies you know righteousness means right standing before god so if i'm standing aligned here's the here's the here's that awareness again when i'm standing a uh, uh, consciously aware in other words when i'm when i'm right standing which is which is uh, aligning in my right standing which is i'm where i need to be at the right place at the right time so i'm righteousness peace which means I am whole, I'm not fragmented, 
And what does that mean? Here's, here it goes back to what I said earlier. What does wholeness mean? Uh, nothing missing, nothing broken. Peace means nothing missing, nothing broken. What is nothing missing? Oh man, you're so scatterbrained today. I'm so scatterbrained. I got to do this. I got to call Elizabeth. I got to, you know, uh, uh, take Henry to work. I got to, you know, um, uh, you know, um, I got a deadline for Peter today. You know, when I'm scatterbrained, I'm not going to hear from God. When I'm scatterbrained, hello, people. Somebody, somebody send me some hearts here. When I'm scatterbrained, I'm not operating the kingdom. Because when I'm scatterbrained, oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to pick up the kids at five. I got to cook dinner at seven. I got to, or five, you know, four, whatever. You know, I got to you know, do a presentation a day. You know, what am I doing? I'm, I'm absorbing myself more than I am consciously serving the universe. And what I mean by universe is my environment. When I'm not consciously aware of serving creation, I'm, then I'm self-absorbing with my duties, my what I got to do, my, my, what is my list of responsibilities. In other words, and, and list of responsibilities is good and healthy, but sometimes it can be very self-absorbed because you get into yourself more and you're not aware of giving of your life, your energy, your, your essence, your money, your your attention. Remember, where attention goes, energy flows, right? So where I'm giving my attention, I want my energy to flow. If I'm giving my attention to presentation this morning at 10 a.m., got to pick up the kids, got to get dinner. You know, notice how all this is my, me, me, me. What I, what I got we got what I got to do there's nothing wrong with that but when you when you when you're leveraging it out with the power of servanthood and leadership and giving and and receiving then you're going to never hear from the Holy Spirit and you're never going to be able to operate in the fullness of the I am of God which is the kingdom of God so it's right standing peace not being scatterbrained, being whole, which means staying attuned, staying aware, being aligned with my environment, being aligned with who's around me, being aligned with I'm a blessing. You know, I want I want to be a blessing. I, I want to be able to give. I want to I want to love. I want to exhort. You know, I'm going to say this to you. I don't know if um if my friend Devin's on here. Devin is um uh, what I call my 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 dear brother here, and uh, I'm going to say his name out loud. But there's not a day that goes by that this amazing my amazing nephew, I'm going to call you my nephew, my amazing nephew doesn't text me and say, you know, I hope you have a good day. hope you have a blessed day. You know, you're always giving to people. You're always, you know, you're such a blessing to people. I mean, that makes me feel alive. It makes me feel, feel electrocuted because he is the exhorter. He is the encourager. That's always like, you know, you're such a blessing to people. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm so glad you're in this life. I mean, I mean, it's, it's comments like that that we forget about. You know why? Because we get self-absorbed with what I got to do, what I got to do, but we're never giving of our love and our attention and our energy to electrocute somebody else to, to, to be, hey, be in your right mind. Hey, be alert, be receptive, be aligned. The people, the creation, the universe, people are waiting to see you, hear from you. And those are part of your spiritual giftings. Those are, that's the anointing. That's the presence of God upon you. That's the kingdom of God. That's a now kingdom reality. And that's when and how you activate God and the Holy Spirit in you when you begin to be alert, receptive. Hey, I'm going to bless somebody today. I could say how much I love that boy with all my heart because he's always like, you know, I can check my text. I'm like, man, look at this. This guy rocks because he's always thinking about me and other people outside of himself and you know what he does that means what he gives is going to come back upon him and so he's just giving he's giving to the kingdom he's given to the universe he's given out there so he so it can so not for the purpose to get it back but he's set himself up to get back that's the beauty of the kingdom and so when you're so righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost is the kingdom of god so right standing which is alignment righteousness means uh wholeness or being at peace means i'm whole i'm not fragmented i'm not scatterbrained i'm whole which means i'm consciously aware and awakened of of my of what's going on when i'm fragmented and scatterbrained i'm never giving everything my full attention i'm giving just bits and pieces to things that really 
I shouldn't even be focused on on probably at that moment, right? Because I'm because when you focus on five thousand things, you're never going to get one thing accomplished fully, right? And so righteousness, peace, and joy, joy in the Holy Ghost is what the Bible says. So it is that joy unspeakable and full of glory. Another uh, another way of joy is the joy of the Lord your strength. When I'm operating in joy, I'm operating in the kingdom, which means I'm operating and activating the Holy Spirit. I'm operating in joy, which means I've got more strength to me. I've got more vitality, more energy to be able to get the job done of what it is I need to give myself to, which is everything. How many of you guys are with me? So you have to think on that level of all this works together. Everything of the kingdom of God works together. Everything good, bad, and ugly in this universe works together for my good. And when I'm consciously aware of everything around me, then God will use everything to work out for my good. How many is with me today? All right. Rebecca, how do we ask the Holy Spirit to help us lift our self-confidence? Good question. Well, let me say this. The Holy Spirit is always wanting to encourage and exhort you. Remember, prophecy is edification, exhortation, and comfort. And what that means, and, and knowing that prophecy comes from the Spirit of God, uh, you know, part of those sort of giftings, then that means that that it's sort of tied into the exhorting, ex, you know, edification and comfort, right? According to Scripture. And so, when you think about sort of lifting you up, you have to think of what do I do? I need to be able to to vast and and bask in the presence of the Spirit. Spirit, knowing that his job, his duty, I don't like, like to use those words, but it's almost like a forcefulness, like I got to do, but it's like his honor, his his uh, desire, whatever, is to be able to exhort you. So so when we prophesy, we prophesy what? Uh, according to our faith, the Bible says, but we also prophesy with edification, exhortation, and comfort. So if, if, the, if, if, the, um, if the gift of prophecy comes from the Holy Spirit, and, and and that means that means it's coming out of the resource, okay, of edifying, exhorting, and comforting. And so when we look at the main functioning factor of the gift of prophecy that comes from the Holy Spirit, we're looking at the spirit of edification. We're looking at the spirit of exhortation. We're looking at the spirit of comfort. And so in order for the Holy Spirit to sort of activate that. Uh, that awareness of our self-esteem, as you say, or that encouragement, encouragement, all we've got to do is just bask in the presence of his voice, bask in the presence of knowing that the Spirit of God will do that automatically when we just give it attention. When we bask or give the Spirit of God attention, that goes back to your awareness. It goes back to, I'm giving fully my attention to whatever it is the Spirit of God wants to do in me and through me and as me today. And you'd be shocked how much day to day your self-confidence will begin to lift. Let me, let me say this to you guys um, that I think would help all of you guys out as well. A lot of times when we feel we got to have the instantaneous the um the spontaneous the uh the gratification of the now 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 almost like we're, we're expecting this energy burst to happen you pretty much nine times out of ten no offense but you'll be disappointed because a lot of times holy spirit loves to move gradually remember the holy spirit moving over the ho uh, hovering over the uh, the waters in genesis like we talked about last week you know the bible says the earth was without uh, form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the holy spirit hovered over the many waters then god said let there be light see the spirit of god hovers like he did with mary he hovered over mary you know um and what that means is this is a lot of you're expecting a suddenly uh impact from the Holy Spirit at the moment and he can do that but a lot of times and I'm gonna say this honestly uh, we're gonna say nine times out of ten Holy Spirit would rather move progressively because everything everything is line upon line precept on precept why because that's called integrity now what I mean by that is this so hear me out when I say this when we do things progressively and we build things up, we're doing it out of integrity, making sure every little piece that we, every little jot and tittle we're doing is solid, secure, stable, firm. And so we do things that way, right? We don't go, we don't say, man, I met the girl of my dreams today. I'm going to call her in an hour. I'm going to ask her to marry me tonight. And then tomorrow I'm going to get her pregnant when I have kids. I know that's being blunt. You don't do that. You don't, you know, that girl be like, I just met you. You're Fruit Loop. Get away from me. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't, you progressively court her or him. 
you um, you know you 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 get to know them. You you entertain the idea of their of our personalities. Our, we see if we blend. We see if we argue. We see how we get along. You know, we wait through time, and then we you know you see what I'm saying. And then we date. We court. We engage. We you know fiance. We get married. And so so why do we do that? Because it's called respect, integrity. Because we recognize the value of foundational grounding in every single piece. So when we're dealing with this type of, when we're dealing with the Holy Spirit and we're dealing with, you know, sort of self-esteem, for example, Rebecca, we're dealing with the Holy Spirit gradually building piece by piece of your self-esteem, your self-confidence by building blocks. And, 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 and you'll wake up one day and you'll be like, wow, man, I, I'm, I am pretty confident. Like I didn't, I didn't even realize how powerful I realized I am versus bam here's your self-confidence not that you asked for that but i'm saying that in the sense of telling everyone out there you know let's get off the wham bam thank you ma'am i know that's a that's a bad phrase but i'm just being very blunt let's get off the now the bad they know the bam bam let's get off that because what's more important is that the holy spirit takes its time in us because he who began a good work the bible says is more than able to finish it and complete it it doesn't say he who began a good work, bam, and you're done. No. I mean, we, we're lacking integrity, folks. We're lacking solid, solid, solidarity. I mean, um, um, uh, groundedness. We're lacking foundational. We're lacking, we're lacking time. And with time comes groundedness, growth, maturity, um, uh, and, you know, um, um, all this stuff. And so instead of being, instead of many of you are like, you know, you know, in the name of Jesus, bam, 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 oh, you know, I'm healed. You know, I, mean, I mean, instead of all that, let's get on what is prioritizing all through the Bible, except maybe for a few times, and that is progressively, you know, uh, 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 shifting, moving, um, uh, you know, once again, line upon line. Let's move into building maturity through integrity to get the groundedness we need for every piece and every level we do in our lives. We have gotten so microwavable that we are so um, expecting uh, bam, bam, bam without integrity and maturity and growth within the process. Growth in the process to me is so, so much more important than you know, uh, bam, 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 bam. Oh, I mean, uh, you know, I got it, I got it. I mean, you know, you know what I mean. I don't, I'm not making fun of that, but I'm saying though, where's the maturity in the process with that? You know what I mean? It doesn't mean God can't do it. It just means God would rather you grow through the good, the bad, the ugly in that. Now, I know I got off your question here, Rebecca, on self confidence, but my point being with that is, you will wake up one day, my my amazing, beautiful friend, and you'll be you'll be so confident you won't even remember the whole process because you you allow the spirit to just sort of progressively build you up and that's the beautiful the beautiful thing to me is when we look back and we said wow i'm 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 confident where'd that come from it came from all those times when you when you plow the ground and you allow the growth and the maturity to begin to kick in that's the beauty of life that's the beauty of life you know and so, uh, think of it this way. If God healed us instantaneously every moment we got sick or had some, some had some kind of problem or, or we never, you know, suffered financially, we could just say, Lord, give me money. Bam, there's a million dollars. I mean, no offense, but we would be spoiled, rotten brats. And we would have no respect for God's kingdom, no respect for anyone else because we would have a magic spell, a magic peel, a magic wand. God doesn't want that, folks. You know, I think the charismatic move has gotten so much into the magic wand mentality, and it's like it's it's devastating. It's um, it's how can I say this? It's distorting the word of God. It really is. So we got to be careful. God is more into maturing through the process. That's a beautiful thing. I right? hope it helped you a little bit, Rebecca. I know I went off the subject with you sometimes, but hey, I just love you. You, you read me. You you got me, right? You got me, Rebecca. All right, let's do one more here. Uh, I heard a preacher, uh, sweet, I like this. I heard a preacher say that 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says, Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. What is your interaction on that of that verse 
I, th I think that's what you said. I think it's, I think you said interaction, I think. Okay, so let's read it again. Um, now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. I feel, honestly, you want the truth? I feel that's that sort of goes along with the lines I just mentioned. I don't feel that we're going to be into a meeting. All of a sudden, liberty is going to break out. And it can, and it will. I mean, I mean don't get me wrong, it does. But that it's going to, like, break out. All of a sudden, we all leave completely just like, oh, liberated. You know, I, I feel that there's always a Genesis effect. There's a beginning. Where well, the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, meaning that as we stay in tune, fine tune, well, no matter if I'm in the presence of a conference, a presence of my home, presence of my prayer closet, and the presence of watching a movie with my family, you know, when I'm constantly aware of that presence of, of, of the Holy Spirit having free reign in my life, then that liberation is constantly liberating me. You know, and I have to, we have to remind ourselves that, um, that, you know, everything is once again, you know, is progressively, I don't just sit here and say, okay, lay hands on me and that I will be, you know, 20 right now, bam, bam, bam. Wow. You're 20. You know, I have to grow from one, two, three, four, all the way to 20, you know, uh, or 20 to 50, you know, the, the process of the, of, 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 um, the maturation, I should say of the process you know, maturing in the process of life is a beautiful thing and liberation, you know, when the sun sets free is free indeed. And one of the verses in, in, in the Greek actually means the, um, the, the constant awareness actually of the growth process or the, uh, or, or the setting free. That's what it means is the ing, the, the ing, the setting free constant, constantly. The book in, of, of Revelation says he who was he who is and he who is to come. In the original Greek language, it says, he who was, he who is, and he who is constantly coming. Constantly coming. There's a constant awareness of his presence coming, liberating me, right? I don't believe in, I'm set free right now, praise God. Because then my mind has to catch up with, with what happened inside, if that's the case. Now, can it happen? Sure it can. All things are possible for God, and God does it a lot of times. However, nine times out of ten, my mind, I, you know, my mind out of respect, please hear me out, folks, out of respect, my mind, because I want to honor my mind, I want my mind to grow with my process. How many of you just got that? With my, pro with my liberating process. Why? Because if I was to give you a million dollars and your mind uh, did not grow to the liberation of that financial gain I just gave you, you will blow it within a couple of days. You will ruin it and you will have nothing to show for it because your mind hasn't prospered with the growth and the progression of growth with the money that was given to you. But if you start earning earning the money and your your finances progressively start growing in God with God's favor by, let's say, hey, I, I'm going to buy a house, Airbnb it. Wow, it's making me some money. I'll buy another one. Two years later, I'll rent out a house. I'll buy another one. And you progressively grow with your finances, your mind grows with that. Your liberation grows with that. And and therefore, your God wants, God, and th this is how I say it, God wants to respect and honor your mind as well. If God gave you an instantaneous liberation, million dollars, you know, wham, bam, blah, 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 whatever. He also knows your mind's going to suffer. Am I telling the truth? Tell me the truth, God. He knows your mind's going to suffer. And you might say, well, God can liberate the mind. Nope, 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 not biblical, not biblical, need to read your Bible, because the mind is my responsibility to have it renewed, the carnal mind of man is God's enemy, so God doesn't like my carnal mind, why doesn't he just zap it and change it, because it's not God's job to zap it and change it, it is my job, my responsibility to honor my mind by having it starting on the renewed process, right? And so that is where we have to understand, do I want to grow with the process uh, so my mind can grow with me and I'm not out of tune by having the money and my mind still having a poverty mind, mindset, right? Or, or, or liberation, God liberates me completely, but my mind is like, I've lived in, in hell or chaos or 
uh, sickness for so many years that now my mind doesn't know what to do with this? No. So there's so he wants you aligned in your trying your being where your body, soul, and spirit can fully be in agreement together and grow in the process. That's honoring who you are in your fullness, when, when you're in your full estate, your full state. Amen. How many just got that? I wanted each one of you to know that. I know there's a lot more questions. I'm probably going to go in and here in a second, but I'll just go on. I'll flip through some of these just to see. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I get more questions here. Amen. You're right. You're right about that. Let's see. Any other questions? I'll, I'll do one more. Elizabeth, thank you. You're more than welcome, Elizabeth. Just love you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Any more, any more, any more. That's an awesome. Thank you. I'll tell you, you guys are way ahead of me on these comments. Woo, I love it. All right, so, man, let's see. I'll, I'll do one more. I'll do one more. So, uh, da, 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 da. let's find one more good question. Can we have one more question? A little here, a little there. You got that right. Okay, I'll tell you what. We'll do one. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I go any further, I got one, I'll, I'll answer one more question uh, on that. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'll, let, I'll answer Elizabeth's question, then we're going to close. But before I do... If this is blessing you, hello, Merry Christmas. If this is blessing you guys, please buy badges right now on Instagram, all right? Remember, the world is about sowing and reaping. We don't take, we receive by giving. We receive and we also give simultaneously. If not, you're off kilter. So if you guys don't mind, buy some badges for me real quick. I mean the world to me. Amen. Got a staff to pay for. And those of you on um, uh, Facebook, you can buy stars as well. So do that today if you get a chance. So I like this question. My dear, wonderful, amazing friend Elizabeth said, how do we deal with fragmentation? Good God, Elizabeth. I love your question. I love your question. Ah, I'm going to take you with me on the road. I'm going to say, she's got the questions. Okay, so how do we deal with fragmentation? Okay, my nose itches here. What, is, what does they say when your nose itches? What is oh, oh, stick, uh, oh, the, your nose itches? Somebody's thinking about you or so, I, don't know, I don't know. Who knows? Hopefully somebody's thinking about me. So um, how do we deal with fragmentation? Great question. First of all, let me say this. If you are aware, okay, when you, when, if, you're, if you're aware of, okay, you know what? I feel fragmented or I feel, um, mis what is the word, miscombobulated, as, as, as they say, or I feel, you know, like I'm not, I, got, I don't have it all together right now. If you feel that way, here's what you got to do, okay? I'm very honest with you, Elizabeth, and I say this to every one of you. One of the number one things, okay, you got to do is center yourself. Now, I know some of you who are very, if you're very religious, you're going to be like, oh, I don't deal with that kind of stuff, you know, and I'm like, then you're not, you're not into health and wellness, okay? Scientifically and medically, they will tell you, you're like, you got to center yourself. Meditation is not some new age hocus pocus. Meditation is what you make it to be. Meditation is all through the Bible. Meditation, the Bible makes it plain to meditate upon God's word. Meditate day and night. All, all we're saying is centering yourself when you're fragmented means this. Get yourself together. Get in your thoughts. Get in your awareness. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about, oh, I got to pray in tongues real quick. You know, I got to read the Bible. Here, here's the thing. You should have your time. You should have your time of alone time with reading your word. You should have your alone time with praying tongues, whatever you do. You should have your alone time with whatever you do. Outside of that, outside of that, you should have your meditation time. And all that means is you're gathering your thoughts together. You've heard that phrase before. You're centering yourself, which means you're learning to focus and center yourself the moment to say, you know what? <sighs> I'm going to get it together right now. I'm clear my mind of all the junk I got to do today. You know, uh, I got to clear my mind of Sally Sue and Bob and Fred and my job and my family and my, my, my food and my time. I, and what you do is you, you, you uncloud your mind by being present. By being present, take a deep breath. Ah, oh, here I am. The moment you do, everything, Elizabeth, that's fragmented, job, family, uh, you know, your, your mind, remember, your mind is, your mind is like, how many remember that old, um, the, uh, wasn't, wasn't the Rocky Horror Picture, picture Show, what was it called? Uh, little Shop of Horrors. You guys remember that Little Shop of Horrors? And no, it's not a horror movie. For those of you that are too religious for me. Little Shop of Horrors. It, it was like a funny comedy, really dumb little comedy. came out, I think, in the 80s, whatever. You know, and, and the, the plant, remember that plant came on saying, feed me, see more, feed me, see more. 
somebody must have really whoever did that movie had to be on drugs it was the dumbest com comedy i've ever known but but i always remember you know feed me z more but if you think about it that's what your mind is. your mind is always like feed me feed me feed me feed me it doesn't care what you what what you feed it, it you could feed it you know uh you know world war three mentality fear-minded of sally sue falling off her bicycle i could lose my job today i don't have enough christmas christmas presents oh my gosh you know i'm getting older i mean you know your mind is just like feed me, feed me so you have all these fragmentations all these thoughts and fragmentations around me all right simon feed me that's right you know all around it. and so what happens is elizabeth is you got all this going on all the and remember this your thoughts your energy I mean, we've proven that everything's energy in the universe. That's not New Age. It's not. It's all good focus. It's it's science. Science. It's God. It light slow down slow slow down into matter. Right. Um, I don't have time to go into all that. So therefore, but your thoughts are energy. So my thoughts are not sustain. My thoughts are not staying in my brain. My thoughts are actually coming out of my mind. That's because it's the energy. And what it means is all these thoughts that are like. Over here, over here, over here. All that. So what happens is the fragmentation is pulling me over here. Take care of this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. And so in order for me to get it together is I quiet myself. I say, you know what? All your thoughts, I dismiss right now. Nothing in this moment is more important than respecting myself. Take a deep breath. Ha. <sighs> Clear my mind of all the junk, all the garbage, all the duties, responsibilities, accountabilities, you know, blah, blah, blah. At that moment, and I would say do it maybe 10 minutes a day every day. After you do your prayer time, you know, everything, spend time with God, do it, you know, maybe 10 minutes you get a chance. I do it every single morning, every single morning. And that's how I'm able to, people say, how are you so productive? How do you write all these books? Because I know how to clear my mind. I know how to get rid of all the junk that's trying to fragment. Remember this, Elizabeth. Everything of this world, all thoughts want to tear you and rip you apart. Everything wants to rip you apart. What thoughts want to rip, want, want to rip, rip you apart? You know, oh, will my marriage last? Oh, well, she, she, she called me this word the other day. She cut me off, you know, in, in, in line the other day. Do you see what so and so is wearing? You know, look at her. She thinks she prays better than me. You know, you know. Uh, I'm just making up stupid stuff. Oh, you know. Uh, oh my gosh, my son said my dinner wasn't good last night. I mean, all the craziness of this world. And so they're all sent to your mind to fragment you. You got to be in control of your mind by what? Removing the fragmentation. Clear my mind. You know what? I'm going to give myself 10 minutes out of respect, out of honor, to clear my mind of all the junk and just sit here and be. Because in him I live, I move, and I have my be, being, present tense. Ha! Ah, thank you, Father. And I sit here. And I enjoy my 10 minutes. All of a sudden, I'm back in a state of awareness to say, now my head's on straight. What do I need to get accomplished today? You see what I'm saying? It's very important to do that. You're more than welcome, Elizabeth. You're more than welcome. I'm glad you actually brought that question up. You got to remember, you, when it comes to you, you got to just deflect it all and say, you know what, mind, you need a break. You deserve a Kit Kat today. Give yourself a break right now. So anyway, so, all right, guys. So here's what we're going to do, all right? Number one, rule of thumb, order the book right now. Go right now to the website or go on the quick link above and, 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 and order Receiving the Gift of the Spirit. You can download the book as an ebook right now or you can order the paperback book before we sold out. Second of all, write it down your calendar on your iPhone calendar, definitely, or your Android calendar. N uh, not this Wednesday, not the 20th, the 27th. Uh, and my wonderful, dear, amazing team that I love dearly will post uh, um, some um, memes here on Instagram and Facebook to keep you guys posted on it. Next Wednesday night, the 27th, 6 p.m. Central Time, we will usher the new year with our Prophetic Life Night. That night, tell everybody about it. Let's see, third of all, third of all, third of all, third of all, what can I say besides have a Merry Christmas? Uh, stay tuned to a podcast on Wednesday. Please sign up. Sign up right now to re start receiving your monthly prophetic word. Get it going now for 2024, guys. Sign up now. Go to the website, identitynetwork.net, or go to the quick link on the top. It should be one of those links, and, and sign up for a monthly prophetic word, all right? I love every one of you. I truly do. You guys have been my family, my friends. You guys have been... Um, 
my lifesaver at times, and I love collaborating with you guys. I really do. I'm excited. Christmas here is like what? Oh my gosh! It's is it one week from now? Let me get this right. Is it one week from now? Yes, it is. My favorite day is one week from today. So I will not be with you guys next Monday. Let me just say this: I will not be with you guys next Monday. But there will be recorded um uh blah 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 video for you guys. Wishing you wishing you a Merry Christmas, reminding you of next Wednesday night. But I love every one of you. I truly do. If you guys want to make my day, then go and buy some product from me on identitynetwork.net. All right, I love you guys. Have a blessed, wonderful day. I'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Once again, guys, have a Merry Christmas.